All right, everyone. Uh, welcome back to Green Gaming Fest. Uh, this is Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania DX mode, run by Slosh. So, Slosh, take it away. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Slosh. I've been running this game since it came out. Um, and yeah, I'm going to be running Deluxe mode. Um, this game has several different modes and different categories that you can run. Um, including, uh, I'm gonna just select a character real quick so I can show them off, uh, five different special modes. There's reverse mode, dark banana mode, gold banana mode, original stage mode, and deluxe mode. Uh, we're only gonna be running deluxe mode today. All of these are very challenging, uh, to complete, especially dark banana mode. Thankfully, we're not, we're not going with that. Um, but deluxe mode consists of the 46 stages that were introduced to the Super Monkey Ball series in the game Super Monkey Ball Deluxe, all in a row. And they show up in the order that they showed up in Deluxe, so like the beginner stages first, and then the advanced, and then the three expert stages. Um, but before we get into that run, uh, I'm gonna need to know who won the character bid war. Uh, so, the character who won the bid war is Baby. All right. Baby it is. Um, fun little fact about this game that you're gonna notice pretty quickly is uh, you can dress up these six main monkeys in different outfits. So I decided to dress Baby up in a little little outfit just for the occasion of Green Gaming Fest. So um, we're gonna be starting on the stage edge, going all the way through the stage asterisk. Um, so I'm gonna give a quick countdown and then we're going to be off. So Three, two, one, go. So the first thing to get out of the way um, about movement in this game is in the original uh, Monkey Ball games, Super Monkey Ball 1, 2, and Deluxe, um, inputs were drawn in a square, so diagonal inputs were faster. However, the opposite is the case for Super Monkey Ball and Animania. So whenever we can uh, be moving uh, just straight forward, uh, that's what we're gonna wanna do. And I did not get escalator clip, which is fine. We're gonna just sit on the escalator, go on up here, hit a fast forward switch to speed this one up and go through the goal. Uh, that sometimes happens. You sometimes just don't get a clip. Sometimes you fly up both sets of stairs. Sometimes you have to take them both slowly. It's not really that big a deal. <laughs> that stage is not that hard uh, regardless. Um, another thing to mention about deluxe mode specifically is later on we're going to see some different colored goals. Um, in deluxe mode, we're only going to see blue goals and green goals. There are also red goals, but the green and red goals act as warp goals. They skip stages. Um, so a green goal will skip one stage and a red goal will skip two. However, the warp goals, for whatever reason, don't work in deluxe mode. Like they, they purposefully don't skip stages. So we will be unable to skip stages using them. It's not that big a deal since there are really only two that it would be optimal to to take out of the three in the in the entire category. Um, and another little mechanical thing about the game that uh, you probably probably noticed me doing on Swirl is I was adjusting the camera manually. So this game has a manual camera, and. It has a lot of really useful purposes. Um, one that I personally love utilizing as much as I can is just holding the holding the, the camera input straight down. Um, because that locks the camera in place and that makes setting up certain strats super easy. And uh, I'll actually be utilizing the cam lock set up quite a bit in this run. Um, we're actually coming up to a stage, not this next one, but the one after that where I will be utilizing cam lock to uh, set up a little falling strat. But uh, falling strats are very challenging in, um, oh no, in um, Banana Mania because of the way the camera works when you're falling. 
doesn't look s fully straight down. It looks just kind of down. Um, yeah, there are five stages in this run that I've sort of dubbed the, uh, the Deadly Five because of how much harder their strats are than literally everything else in the run. And uh, this stage here, Gutter, is the first of them. Um, yes, okay. Third try. Third try is really, really good. Nice. Um, pretty much, you want to fall just straight into the goal. However, you have very little area to work with where you're landing. Um, the setup for that strat is actually really funny. You want to kind of line yourself up with... Uh, the center of an onion that is in the in the soup pot in the background. Um, but now we got... Okay, this stage makes me realize that there's something that I definitely need to uh, point out about Deluxe Mode. Deluxe Mode stages tend to have a trend. Most of them are either very large and or maze type stages. Um, there are some later on that are excessively big, and then there's some like Jolt Channel that are nice and small and uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, here's here's quite a strat on octagonal. Hopefully, I hit it. You got to go over the center. Um, but the problem is, if you fall down to that lower tray below, you sort of lose a lot of time. You pretty much have to reset the stage at that point or else you will lose, like, 10 seconds. Um, I'm gonna just fly over the stage on Sewer. And then on this next stage, Arc Bridges, uh, I'm going to be skipping half of the level by just going sideways a little bit, turning the camera, so that way the camera doesn't have to turn by itself, giving me that strong forward input earlier, and just jumping right across the gap and into the goal. Oh, baby, into the goal. There we go. <laughs> um, so yeah, something I should mention. Okay, first I'm gonna mention this is the second of the Deadly Five. Fear Field is a monster of a strat. We're gonna just go straight and turn around and turn back around. Please don't die to the goal. I almost died to the goal. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so usually I don't go for the goal dunk because usually if I hit the party ball like that, I fly even more sideways and die. Um, fortunately, it was a much more forgiving party ball hit. And that brings me to uh, the next point about comparing Banana Mania to the original uh, three games, and that is the original games have the most merciless party ball imaginable. If you touch it, it will throw you very hard and very far. The party ball is much more forgiving in this game, but the goal posts... Oh no, where am I going? Uh, the goal posts in this game are just as merciless as the original uh, party ball was. In fact, on certain stages, um, you can be perfectly lined up with uh, the goal tape and still get launched by the goalposts, that's how merciless they are. Also, funny cam lock strat on catwalk, that is usually a ridiculously hard strat, but if you lock the camera down and hold upright, it becomes um, the easiest stage in the run, quite literally. Now in catapult, I need to watch my speed here and my positioning because catapult can have the issue with uh, community dubbed concrete goal tape. Um, if you go too fast and if you're positioned too far, for some reason, if you're positioned too far to the right, um, the goalposts hate you more. I don't know why. But, uh, that's just sort of a funny, funny quirk of the goalposts. And actually, speaking of the goalposts, on this next stage, uh, I'm gonna be utilizing the goalposts for a strat. This one is the third of my self-dubbed Deadly Five coil ramp, and this has the most fearsome strat of them, in my opinion. 
Shoutouts to iSwimfly for finding that texture cue uh, up top. If you cam lock and then line up with the circular bolts on the floor and just go straight to the right, you will almost certainly always crash into the goalpost and fly straight back up, allowing you for a nice, elegant goal, goal entry. Um, yeah, that, that texture cue does wonders. I'd, I'd found that strat out initially, but it was so inconsistent because I didn't have the texture cue. And then I swim fly, found the texture cue, and it's like 90% success rate for me now. So that is definitely a nice strat to have because that stage can lose a lot of time without it. Um, stages that are long and take a lot of time, waver. Uh, believe it or not, despite the way that stage looked, it is very, very easy to lose a lot of time to, uh, going too fast into each of those hills. If you hit too high up on one of the hills, you will lose all of your momentum, all of your speed, and we don't want to do that, because we want to go fast. This is a speed run. Um, this next stage I need to be a little bit careful, because people are always talking about upward stairs in ball game. The downward stairs in ball game are the real monsters. If you do that sort of land, oh, that was actually really fast because of that. Uh, if you land on the edge of one of the stairs, you will just lose most of your height and launch forward. Most of the time on treads, that will also uh, send you sideways one way or another and you'll usually fall off the side. Fortunately that time it just sent me straight forward and that's sort of what we wanted. Um, but there's a much harder downward stairs in ball game stage coming up after this next one. Um, and it will be the only warp goal that we'll be taking in the run. But because the warp goals don't actually skip stages, it doesn't affect the category at all. Um, here on DNA, we're going to be taking the green goal, hopefully. Uh, going to go over here, fall off the side. Nice. I was messing that strat up so much last night, I was a little bit worried. Um, that is probably... That strat's probably one step below the, the five stages that I have alluded to in this run. Um, but much like Waver, we've got a uh, building here, which is a st long stage that can easily lose you a lot of time if, um, if your movement is not as precise as you want it to be. It's much less likely to lose a lot of time on building than it is on waiver, but you do want to make sure you don't cut the corners a little too hard. I have fallen down layers in the building before trying to, trying to go a wee bit too fast. Um, we're about to say goodbye to this desert world theme because scrolls is the final stage in it and then we're gonna be going back to the to the washing machine um, Super monkey ball has some awesome world themes. I, I really like the creativity and The first stage back in the washing machine is the fourth of the deadly five cliff um, the really long cliff that you gotta go loop all the way around, uh, that did not kill me, which means I can just try this again, nice and easy, and then, okay. So, I'm trying to get a clip off this little corner, and pop up onto the slanted wall, and go across straight to the goal. I cannot believe th okay, there we go. <laughs> I cannot believe that I had four failed attempts in a row that did not end up sending me off the side because usually, there we go. Nice. Usually if you miss the clip, you fall off the side of the stage, but there are just times when it doesn't do that and you just get set gently back on the stage, which is a uh, kind of it, I guess, but it's a really hard strat. It has ended quite a few of my uh, runs that I've had. Oh man, we didn't get any uh, layer skips on Concentric. Concentric is a little bit of a finicky stage. You usually want to try and skip as many layers as possible, but sometimes the monkey just wants to take a nice leisurely stroll. Which is fine, because this stage we can skip literally the entire stage, just by backing up and clipping up to the goal. That's a fun strat. That's a really hard and long stage without that strat, so I'm very glad that that exists. Um, another one of those big maze stages here. 
Uh, oh, that was an interesting clip. I've never gotten a clip that smacks me into the ceiling and actually lets me live. Um, I was going for a little bit of a lower, more rightward clip that would just make the second one uh, not required whatsoever, but I'll still take the, uh, the gentle clip. And this right here is the final of the five. Paraboloid is one of the most infamous Monkey Ball stages there is. It is not a fan favorite, and it will become very clear why very quickly. So the way bonus stages work is you can clear them by, oh, come on, by uh, going through the goal or falling out. There is no goal on this stage, and it is a huge box with walls that are entirely too tall. The, unfortunately, the best thing we have to try and escape this stage somewhat consistently is not actually very consistent at all. Uh, you want to stay on that middle line and hope that you get a nice little uh, bounce in the corner up over the wall, which I almost got early on, but unfortunately I'm not going to get it at all. Unless, nope. <laughs> Um, so yeah, if you don't get the Paraboloid escape, then you lose a lot of time, but if you do get it, you can actually fall out of the stage in less than 15 seconds, which is what we wanted to have happen, but alas, it did not happen. Um, yeah, Paraboloid. Uh, we're mostly in the clear now. <laughs> Um, and actually, this next stage, Chaos, is just pretty much 50 seconds of rolling around, so if there are any donations or messages that the host has, now would be the perfect time. Alright, I don't have any donations, but I can talk about one of our prizes. Um, you can donate $8 to get a raffle ticket for a chance to win one of five game keys for Galactic War EX. This is a shop that released on Steam on April 21st. It has some pretty neat speedrun mechanics. I'm definitely going to be donating for a couple raffle tickets and that after the run is done. That sounds really cool. Um, I think that this chaos actually has gone pretty okay. It This is one that is super easy to lose a lot of time on. Um, I'll take a 10. Usually you want to get an 11. Um, but a 10 is still very solid. Once you get into 9, that's the range that you don't want. Uh, this stage you can finish by mostly holding up, but we're not going to do that. We're going to do a clip strat that is going to get me killed first. And then I'm going to just completely miss the clip. I swear that this strat is not hard. <laughs> um, there we go. So if you hold up, you have to pull back towards the end of the stage because you'll hit that last slanted part right before the goal. But if you hit the clip strat right, you can just fly straight into the goal. And this is the last actually hard stage. Um, it's probably not going to look like that because I died twice on Tilt Maze. I died once on Fractal. Now, hopefully, if things go according to plan, I won't die a second time. There we go. So Fractal is tough because, I mean, yeah, it's a lot of balance and a lot of potential clipping that can send you straight sideways, which you don't really want to do. Um, but now that we're through Fractal, we're pretty much in the clear. Hills is nice and straightforward, and the rest of the stages are nice and easy. We only have four stages to go, and this is by far the longest one remaining. Dodge Maze, it's another one of those huge maze stages, but with a little bit of a twist. Uh, the only way to get to the goal, you have to push these walls that have these little grooves on them because they're actually not walls, they're secret doors. Um, once you once you learn the route, it's a really easy stage, but before you learn the route, this stage can definitely be a time crunch. Because um, my movement was not terrible that time, and I finished with less than half the time left on the clock. That's how long that stage is. Um... <clears throat> And now we got two bonus stages in a row. First we got shelter. We gotta turn around and turn around again and go up a hill into the goal. And then the one after that is Mobius. And 
I mentioned that you can clear bonus stages by going through the goal or falling out. Uh, because I didn't get Paraboloid Escape, this is the only bonus stage out of four this run that I'm going to actually fall out of. Because Skebros, you just go through the goal. Shelter, you can only go through the goal. And Paraboloid is Paraboloid. Uh, time is going to be when I go through the goal on this stage, by the way. This is Asterisk. This is a really easy stage, and that is time. <laughs> GG. That was impressive. Thank you. What was my time, by the way? Um, waiting for Shrine to catch up with probably low 18 minutes. Oh, that's really good. I'm really happy with that. Um, yeah, that was uh, Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania Deluxe Mode. Um, hope you all enjoyed. Uh, your time is in 1823. 1823. Okay, yeah, that's that's really solid. I, I'm definitely happy with that. Um, real quick before I, uh... Hop on off, I'd like to give a couple shout outs real quick. I want to give a shout out to the Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania speedrunning community for being really welcoming, really friendly, and really supportive. I've made so many friends in that community, and I'm so grateful to all of them. And I would, of course, like to give a huge shout out to uh, Team Green Gaming for uh, having me in this marathon. This was a lot of fun, and definitely a Definitely a different experience since this was my first uh, monkey ball run in a marathon and my first marathon run as a VTuber, so this was a lot of fun on many fronts. Uh, yep. So, yeah, that was Super Monkey Ball. Uh, so, this will be my last um, shift as a host for this marathon, um, but uh, sit tight for the next run, which will be Mandator Any Percent by Try Girl.